Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Con Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. All right, folks, I'm on vacation right now. So I taped this before I left and I taped an interview or a conversation with Ryan Porter, who has been Jaden Daniels' quarterbacks coach since he was about 10 or 11 years old. So very few people in the football community know Daniels as well as Porter does because he's worked with them for so long, can, has continued to work with them. And I know Daniels works with some other quarterback coaches as well, but he still goes back to Porter and he still can, he's one of the, he's one of a couple of people that he talks to before each game. So part of his ritual, but again, nobody knows him better in the football world than, than Porter. So wanted to bring him on. I feel like you're going to enjoy this. So here's my conversation with quarterbacks coach Ryan Porter, who has worked with Jaden Daniels for a number of years. Well, Ryan, obviously we've talked before about Jaden Daniels, and I want to start by just kind of getting some background with your work with Jaden. I know how long you worked with him, but tell people like how long you've been working with him, how you were introduced to him. So, yeah, I've been working with Jaden since he was 10, 10 or 11 uh, years old. Uh, I was in my last year of playing uh, arena football, for the Philadelphia soul. Um, and I played, um, one year junior college football, um, with, uh, Jaden's cousin mm. Trey. And so that's how I knew Jaden's dad. So I was training, um, at a YMCA, uh, park and his dad was walking out of the gym and he just came by to say, Hey, what's going on? I was just doing my own field work going over my mechanics, my drops and stuff like that. Um, and his dad walked up to me and he was like, Hey, do you train quarterbacks? Um, asked me what I was doing told him I was getting ready for, for my last season upcoming. And I was like, yeah, um, I can, you know? And he said, all right, we'll be here tomorrow. And the rest was history brought Jaden out to me. Um, and yeah. Um, and I'm sure at that time you knew, Oh, this kid's going to be a future Heisman trophy winner, second overall pick. You probably can see it right <laughs> away. Right. Absolutely not. You know, like <laughs> I, I knew within the first session, you know, that obviously the kid was going to be special, but me, me and, um, me and, me and Jaden's dad talk about that all the time. Like you knew the kid was good, but I mean, you never know anything like right. that. All right. Right. When did you like, so how often would you work with him and, and how often do you still work with him? Um, so Jaden, I would work with Jaden, especially through like as a little kid and through high school and then the beginning of college pretty frequently um, J where Jaden is really, really good is Jaden never turns down an opportunity to get better. Like Jaden kind of nerds out with this, this football thing. So um, in high school, obviously we had a, a, a very uh, consistent routine. Um, and then as a kid, he would take his dad would bring it to me two to three times a week. Um, and then we kept that pretty consistent. Um, then obviously I became uh, his quarterback coach at his high school team. Um, and um, I mean, I was with him seven days a week. So J Jaden is very routine based, very, very routine based. Uh, obviously things are a little bit different now with him being, sure. you know, in the DMV area um, and with him being at LSU Jaden would come back when he'd get free time in California um, when he was at Arizona state. I went up there a couple of times and we'd go in the bubble and we'd work and stuff like that. But um, as often as Jaden could come back and get work, he would. Has he, has he changed his approach at all? Or is it, or is when you're working with him, are you still seeing the same person and his approach that you had at the beginning? No, Jaden's the same. Yeah. J Jaden's exactly the same. Um, he, he's going to be very private when he works. He doesn't want a lot of people around, but he's, he's kept the same routine. I mean, he's, he's, he's extremely consistent. Um, but he's, he does not like to break routine, um, at all. I mean, even from like what he eats to what he drinks, to what time he gets up to what time he goes to bed. Jaden is, is a very, 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 very consistent individual when it comes to that kind of stuff. He has the exact same approach. If not, he probably, probably more, um, now than he was now. I mean, he, he understands what it, what it is to be a pro. He was a pro's pro 
uh, really going into his high school career. So, like, so when you hear now, he's get he was during the spring, he's getting to the facility at five forty five a.m. Right. That doesn't does that surprise you at all? No, I mean I'm five forty five. I'm that's probably more like four forty five, right, or four a.m. Like they probably have to open up the building a little bit earlier for him. To be honest with you, that's Jaden. So. And you you talked about this before, football nerd. What is that like? You just you know he nerds out with football. What do you see with that? Like what what examples are there of him nerding out? And I know you his dad was that way is that way too. Yeah, um, just constantly always watching film, um, finding new ways. If there's a new technology out um, that can give him an opportunity to be better, you know, throwing motion, footwork, right? Like I was just in at, at LSU this past weekend, um, and they have, you know, Jack Marucci up there, who's kind of like their Bill Nye, the science guy. Mm -hmm. And we spent some time together this weekend and they were going over their, their virtual reality thing that they have with, uh, with Jaden and how, what a big, um, what a big advantage that was for, for them, uh, for Jaden. Cause he used that quite a bit. It was the VR goggles and had the wands and stuff like that. So spent time uh, this weekend with, with, with Jack and, and with Joe Sloan, the offensive coordinator, and they were explaining, breaking down, like, how Jaden used it, right? And what he did, his approach was with that day in and day out to understand protection, to understand his progressions, full field read progressions, game plans, uh, you know, installs, uh, daily, weekly installs and stuff like that. And how now, as, as far as I'm – what I've been informed is that um, the commanders actually purchased that software they and they're using it, yeah. So – and he he credits that to a big part of his success, especially this these these last couple of years at LSU. It's funny because I I talked to Jack a couple like a month or so ago, and when you introduce that technology to make it work, you better make sure you have the right person using it because not every yes. person. And so I think he would have been a perfect one to kind of be the test guy for that, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, absolutely, I agree. And what else? Like with in terms of like football nerd, like you talk about plays and watching film how often would he watch film what kind of things would he point out watching film that maybe was a little bit more than some other guys you've worked with well we've always instilled to him at a very young age that the money's in the small details of things so like if he'll he'll take a rep and we're just going over just basic in his transition in his four five or his two three and then we'll film it he'll come back and he's just, just one rep. I mean, he's replaying that rep over and over and over again, checking, okay, it was his elbow up, right? What his offhand looks like? Is he front foot heavy? Is he back foot loaded? You know what I mean? Every single rep, he approaches it like it's the last play of the Super Bowl, right? Like, what could I have done to get better on that? Like, he he he, he takes it takes it serious. But again, I credit his dad, right, for his approach uh, to the game and how proactive he is in his preparation for the game. His dad has instilled this into him at a very, 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 very young age, helping him understand you have a small window for success in football. And once it's gone, it's gone. So do never take, you know, don't ever turn down an opportunity to get better, whether it's you're out there thrown in the park, whether you're watching film, whether you're, you know, watching practice, whatever it is, like take advantage, full advantage of every single opportunity. Along those lines. It's an obsession. Right? And well, and yeah, and it seems like that. But along those lines, from his dad, you know, he was a 49ers fan, right? He was a Joe Montana guy, and he would yep. point him out. Yep. But also, there's yep. that, you know, when you talk to Jay, and there's a level of humility that Dan Quinn talked about that he's got this veteran uh, know how to go approach things, but a rookie, but a young person's humility, a rookie humility. So, how much does that come from him? And how often would you see that, hear them, hear his dad talking to him about it? All the time. All the time, all the time. Yeah, um, you know, it, it was instilled into you're only as good as your last performance. So, um, you know, yeah, the success the, that you're having, you may go out to the game and throw for, you know, 390 yards and five touchdowns, and then you may go out the very next game and have some, you know, not have some success. So um, you have to stay humble. Um, you, you know that his dad would always talk about <clears> – <throat> How many first round draft picks now are on their third team already? Hmm. You know that this game is is very unforgiving, um, and it, they can wash you out really, really quick. 
Um, and so you have to always be on top of your craft, no matter what. He would point out the contract stuff or the team stuff. That's at a very young age, at, at a very, very young age, you know, he would point that kind of stuff out. Like, you know, it's all good until it's not right. Like how many guys are having immediate success in high school and how many guys are having immediate success in college. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have one bad year in the NFL and then off with your head. Right. That's why his dad didn't want him to play quarterback. Really? Did not want him to play quarterback for these reasons, you know, and Jaden is the one that wanted to play quarterback. So. The footwork you've talked about that before too. How, how much, how much of that is just natural? How much of that is stuff that you guys have emphasized and where do you think he's at with all that? Cause it seems I, to be a strength know, of his game. I think it, it besides how cerebral he is and how smart um, and how well he can process information, how sudden he is, how twitchy he is being able to, you know, extend plays and stuff. I don't think that's talked about enough for Jaden and obviously wasn't showcased, you know, in his pro day. Jaden to me is the most complete quarterback was the most complete quarterback in the draft. And it's something that was taught to him um, at a very, 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 very young age. Now, his dad was a shutdown corner, right? In college. And he, he's very, that's where he gets his athleticism from. He's got defensive back feet, corner feet, right? But to be able to have that at the quarterback position, um, Jaden has had the best feet I've ever coached, really? right? Being able to take them all, dude, it, it's, it's crazy to, to watch him. And I'll never forget, we, we did a private workout with Penn State which Ricky Ronnie, you know, the, the head coach at Old Dominion now. Um, and we did probably 60 scripted throws and Jaden threw every route from four to five different drops, the same route from four to five different drops. So he's taken, you know, multiple five steps, multiple three steps, back out old school Dan Fout style, one step, you know, in his transition and, Rick, and, and you know, Ricky standing there kind of scratching his head going like, wait a minute. Like you've been teaching this and we're like, dude, he's known this since he's 11, 12 years old. And it was just natural for him. Jaden's understand that at a very young age, but also his dad, once he figured out that Jaden was going to play quarterback and that there was no convincing him to cross back over to the defensive side, it was like, all right, we're submerged in this now. We're, 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 we're rocking and rolling. You're going to know every, you know, everything about this. So I, I think that's where I came in. Because that's kind of where what I'm known for in my training. You know, everybody now teaches the off platform and they're trying to create the correct, you know, hip to shoulder dissociation and stuff like that. I'm a big rhythm and timing guy, right? And the the foundation is 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 your base. Um, and I don't think that's taught as much nowadays. Um, and the windows are much smaller now in the NFL. And my my background is arena football. I played nine years in the arena football league. So you had to be very, very creative with your footwork and you had to be very creative with your drops. Um, you know, like Sean Payton's and you know, an AFL guy, uh, Matt Nagy's an AFL guy. So, you know, we we had to be very, very creative on on how we threw the ball and also, you know, multiple three steps, multiple five steps, second threes, not crossing over, you know, flash fives, rhythm five, big fives. So we taught that to Jaden at a very, very young age. And Jaden was able to to do that and be very, very successful at it. Um, and I think you're going to be able to see him do that now in the NFL um, where he didn't really get a chance. He got to do it at Arizona State his first couple years. And then he was in a system with Dem Brock and Coach Sloan where they like he was only allowed to take three drops. He's only taken one shuffle or I'm sorry, one slide, a one step and a three step. So now you're going to see him. You're going to see it. You're going to get an opportunity to see it. And just for people listening too, and I think because you brought this up, I think people think, oh, there's a three, five, and a seven step drop, right? But there's so many variations off of that that to be proficient in more can do what for a quarterback in a passing game? Yeah, you know, it, big time. Like you, you may have a completely different five step drop if you're throwing the same concept out of 12 personnel with two tight ends, right? Or 11 mm -hmm. personnel than you would out of, you know, 10 personnel, right? Because there's obviously going to be slower guys or faster guys on the field, right? So it's all about throwing and rhythm and timing. You look at a quarterback like like uh, Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman, in my opinion, is one of the best to ever do it, throwing within rhythm and timing. Mm -hmm. You rarely saw Troy Aikman ever 
hitch twice. I mean, it was one, two, three, four, five, ball out, one step, ball out, one, two, three, ball out. And if you can do that, now you're going to keep your big boys in front of you happy too. You're going to keep yourself upright, right? It's understanding, right? I got to get the ball out on time. Um, I also think that um, something my rookie season, and I instilled this in Jaden at an early age, is I, I didn't throw a lot of interceptions and, and I, I started throwing rookie mini camp for me. And the, 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 there was a defensive back from, from young Central Ohio. And he tells me there's two keys that I'm keen on for you. And I'm like, okay, what is it? He goes two things. A, you're patting the ball. I understand that's a rhythmic cue, right? So you don't see Jaden Pat that much. It's a very natural habit for most quarterbacks. Yeah. Rhythmic cue, right? He goes, so every time you pat, I know to break, right? Cool. Break that habit. So I'm always jading on about that too. Stop patting, stop patting, stop patting. The amount of times it takes for you to pat, it takes a DB to break up a pass, right? Two is there's going to key your drop, right? So they they watch. He watched me every time I took a three-step, every time I took a five-step. He knew a radius of where he had to guard, right? Okay, if you're a three-step, I'm five to six yards. If I'm a, if I'm a five-step, I'm eight to 12 yards, right? So all he did was just watch my feet. So when I figured it out, and then I instill that now in all the quarterbacks that I train, if you can throw the same route for multiple drops, now you're playing chess with the DB. Mm. Now he can't key your feet. Now he has to literally concentrate on the zone he's been assigned to cover, right? Or he has to focus on the man he has to cover. You're not giving him any tips to teach the quarterback now, hey, we're playing chess, we're not playing checkers. Or I may have just thrown a one-step pitch route, but now I'm going to take a back out or I'm going to take a quick three. I'm going to confuse you, right? So, and I think that's an advantage that Jaden's going to be able to take into the NFL. How do you feel? Big time. And, and how do you feel the Kingsbury offense then fits into all that and what it can showcase for him? Easy, because Jaden's been doing that. So Jaden can take multiple drops, right? Like Jaden can do that. Jaden can get the ball out on time just because his feet are so elite. And I know he's a big fan of the offense, like a big fan of the offense. So it gives him some freedom. So where he can stay open a lot, you'll see Jaden this year back out a lot where he'll just do back out drops, right? So he stays open the whole entire time so nobody can get a key to where he's closing the shoulder off where he wants to go. So, And why do you feel like this this offense might suit him? Because I you know, I, I know he went from Arizona State to LSU. Like you said, Denbrock, you know, some more, you know, whether RPOs or we, whatever. Why does this offense fit him? And why do you think he's excited about this offense? A quarterback guy. I mean, you got to understand, always being helps. A for, yeah, being a former quarterback myself, like when you go in and you have a QB guy, they, they, they kind of, they design the offense around the trigger man, right? So they understand like, all right, what are the ingredients that we have? And Jaden's being the main, main ingredient, right? And then being a former quarterback himself, he's going to rely on a lot of what Jaden's comfortable with and what Jaden can do. Um, and good coaches like, you know, coach Klingsbury and, and is going to understand that. And he's going to give him a lot of freedom to be able to, to be free, have confidence and play as himself. How would you describe his Jane's personality and just as a person, just away from the field? Jane's a goofball, but you wouldn't know that you're never no. going to see that side of him. No, you're ne- he's always got a smile on his face. Yeah. He's always even kill. Um, but he's, He's a goofball. He's he's a happy go lucky, uh, fun guy to be around. Um, but he's only going to show that with people that he's really comfortable with and that he's known for a long, long time. Um, very reserved, quiet. If he doesn't know you, um, not going to say much. But if you know him, you've been around him a long time. He's 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 always laughing, always joking. We see the smiling and laughing a lot right now. And like, mm-hmm. you know, especially when, there's sometimes in practices, he and he and Sam Hartman might have a little bit of a fun competition. So you definitely see that. Um, what as a goofball, like how, how so? Like, what does he do? Always he- poking fun. You listen, like me and his dad and him, you got to have thick skin to be around Jaden. Always poking mm-hmm. fun. Like don't wear some dusty shoes around him or a shirt that's, too small for you or, or your outfit better be uptight. Are you going to get on your head? You know what I mean? So it, it's uh, definitely going to poke fun, you know, just like the guys do that know each other for a long time. You got, you, you got to come in tip top shape around him. When did you see him become like, okay, 
he just took another step here. He's going to be this. Like, when did you see that? Marietta Valley High School. I'll tell you exactly the time. I was waiting for you to ask me this question. All right. Um, his his uh, junior year in high school, his second game, uh, me and his dad were standing on top of the press box probably about an hour before the game. And I asked him, I said, what do you think, realistically, where do you think Jaden is? And he had an okay game, first game of his junior year. Um, and I go, where do you, where, where do you think, where's this going to go? And he goes, and Jay always paints the most humblest pitcher possible. And he was like, yeah, I think he could play Arizona, you know, Arizona State. And he was like, but, you know, I, I'm prepared for, you know, Fresno State, Boise State. Realistic. He always is extremely realistic. And Jaden went out there against uh, Hank Bachmeyer, and he threw for like 598 yards and like seven touchdowns. I mean, went crazy. And we kind of looked at each other like, and then he did it again, John, the next game and the next game. He had like three or four straight games where he threw for over 550 and like six mm-hmm. touchdowns. And we were like, oh, yeah. I mean, no, not group of five. Yeah, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, everything just started racking in. And then, like I said, he threw for over 60 touchdown passes that junior season, um, threw for over 5,100 yards and then rushed for over 1,200 yards. And then he did it again the senior year. That That's when I think we all knew, like, yeah, this is different. This is generational. Like you're, you, you don't see this much. This, you know, I doubt we'll ever see this again, you know, in 10, 15 years. That that's, that's when we knew that it was that game, the Marietta Valley game. And then he did it, you know, back to back to back to back to back games after that. Was there anything even in college beyond that? Like, or, or was whatever happened there? Like, yeah, this is what we expected. Michigan state. <laughs> Against oh, Arizona yeah, State freshman, when yeah. he brought him back. Yeah, mm-hmm. freshman. And then he did it again against Oregon. I mean, it, it, if you if you watch his college career, it, it looked exactly like it did in high school. Like the moment didn't look too big for him. He looked just as calm. He was able to, you know, um, handle the adversity. And he went in there and he just – it looked the same. The game looked as slow for him as it did in high school. Uh, he was able to make the same decisions. He was able to make people miss. He was able to run by people. He was able to have a high completion percentage. He was able to put up crazy Madden-like numbers. Um, but then really, obviously, what he did this year, the jump that he made, it was like, yeah, this looks like his senior year of high school again. The other thing I remember talking to you one time about his running style and where you felt like that emanated from. Because like he doesn't sit there and try and make these big moves to get around guys. He's like, he's almost like he's squeezing through a door sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, so yep. where you talk, you just can kind of describe his running style and where you think maybe that comes from. I, well, his dad tells me, his dad credits all that to flag football. Mm-hmm. His dad says everything, you see the little hip, the yeah, hip that's what, yeah. shift and the hip moving and stuff. And also his dad credits flag football um, to like his sudden decision-making people running at him, trying to pull his flags and bang thrown on the run, like his dad credits all that to flag football, all of it. So he thinks that's where he gets a lot of that style from. But it's funny because after you said that, when I was watching, I'm like, oh yeah, I can see that. I used to coach flag football. Like you can see the way, just like you're trying to avoid the little flag pull and guys missed them. So, yep. you know, like that, that is, that's kind of a, a big deal. And, and last year, was there a game even last year where, again, where you start to see like, the elevation and the continued elevation of the game. And I know the Florida game was a a massive record setting game for him. Was that the game or was there another one? Yeah, I think Florida. Um, And then I know, I know the Alabama game was, you know, it didn't go his way, but he he kept fighting Missouri. I I like the Missouri game where he brought Mm -hmm. him back. That was a dog fight, you know, and I, and I think it's going back to like what, what's the difference between how do you figure out? Cause I think, I think the quarterback position, John is the one position where everybody gets it wrong, right? They get it wrong. And, and it goes all the way back to high school. What's a five-star quarterback. What's a four-star quarterback. Um, what's a first round draft, you know, pick. And in my opinion, a five-star quarterback or a first round draft pick is a kid that you can turn on his film and he's never the reason why they've lost the game. He's 
always the reason why that team's in the game. So you look at the Alabama game, Jaden was the, you know, the main reason why he, they were in the game. Right. So you, if you go back and you look this year, last year, like, I don't think you can really pinpoint a time where Jaden was ever a reason why they didn't win that game. Like Jaden was the reason plus his receivers, you know, why they were in the game. So, I mean, there's a handful of games that I can, you know, that I can pick. Um, but the Missouri game stuck out to me. The Florida game stuck out to me. And even the loss with Ole Miss, right? Like that was a dog fight. That was back and forth, back and forth. Um, those games. You would text with them after games too, right? So he has a routine with me. Yeah. Jaden has a routine where he never breaks routine uh, where he, he calls me before every game. He calls his dad, calls his cousin, calls me. Yeah. Did you yeah. after the after that Florida game, for example, because I know like he was pretty pumped up about that. And that to me, that's the game that took him to the Heisman, right? That put him in, you know, firmly ahead in that race. Did you text him after that one? I you know, I leave Jaden because I know his okay. phone's overwhelmed. You know okay. what I mean? I like I I if I can only I mean I I I wasn't a Heisman trophy winner. I mean, I've obviously played division one football, but I can only imagine like for example, when I went to the Georgia State game, well, I think he put up 11,000 yards and 11,000 touchdowns. <laughs> like he literally had a secret like entrance where he had to sneak out of. And there were still people that were like looking for him. And he had this gray hoodie over his head and me and his dad were kind of in the corner. And it was his own special like exit that he had to. It's, it's overwhelming for him at LSU, man. It's overwhelming. And he had his own little special golf cart that had to take us back to a little – place that we parked like a mile outside of town and then we had to go eat at a buffalo wild wings that was like two miles out of town you know what i mean like he's James, yeah he's overwhelmed you know so I, I try to leave him alone as much as possible you know when he texts me i text back obviously with important you know events like i'll, I'll reach out to him um, but he's got a lot man like he's got so much on his plate um but yeah I'll get a text or I'll get a call. Like if there's any time of like adversity, a rough game or stuff like that, you know, it's usually like right when he gets back on the plane um, and he's headed back. So, so before that Florida game, do you remember that conversation before that game by any chance? I, it, it's, it's typically the same conversation. It's all right. What's the game plan, right? Like what's, what, what's going to be the plan of attack? Um, what's their base defense? Um, what do you plan to do different this game from a fundamental standpoint? What are, what are two or three details that you're going to focus on, right? Small details. Um, how are you going to get yourself in a rhythm early? Cause I believe good quarterbacks know how to create their own rhythm, right? Young quarterbacks rely on offense coordinators and head coaches for, to create the rhythm where they're going to throw quick little slip screens and, and, you know, stuff like that. And I, okay, how are you going to create your rhythm? And, what are you going to do different? Um, are you going to switch your drops up? You know what I mean? Be mindful of your feet. I think you were getting a little wide in your base last game and stuff like that. What What are you going to do different from a fundamental standpoint? You know? Then, um, la la last thing then, too. What Have you gotten feedback from him about how he felt like his spring went? Because I told you before, like, people here are, were really, really high on what they saw from him. What kind of feedback did you get from him? He's head right now. He, he so I, I rely on his dad a lot right okay. now because I know when Jaden gets in camp, um, Jaden is off the grid. He's head down. Um, he cuts out of all distractions. Okay. Um, and he's literally head down and just working. Um, I I do know that uh, Mariota has been great with him. Hmm. You know, uh, like, and we knew that was going to happen. You know, obviously Mariota is 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 done a uh, does done wonders with Jaden, help catching him up to speed, really, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I got a chance to watch probably about uh, 30, 35 clips uh, yesterday and the day before of stuff that he's doing in practice. Um, and Jaden looks like Jaden. You you could see you see he's he's mixing up his drops now when it's time for him to take off the pocket. I mean he's taken off he looks like he's in command of of, of, of the football of his throws um he looks like the same kid but it's so. funny because like if you saw yesterday they hit a couple of throws of brian robinson i think i can't remember it was from the inside the 25 it was in the red zone i can't remember but just really nice throws over the middle to the running back 
And yeah. just to me, like the one linebacker shooting through, can't get there. Next one's over the head of the linebacker. Just really good touch throws, good looking around. You know, I think the second one, he had to look left to right. So, you know, you see a lot of those traits from him. He's very good at, at going through fulfilled reads, right? And mm -hmm. understanding his progression. He'll know where one to two to three to four is, right? He'll walk up to the line of scrimmage, has a plan. Where I think a lot of quarterbacks, especially young quarterbacks, they anticipate, you know what I mean, one to two, right? Um, where Jaden's really, really good. He understands where everybody is. Um, and Jaden is also going to be very, very smart. And he'll make bold decisions when needed to. But if you're going to give him six yards, he's going to take it. He's not going to mess around. I mean, it's one step, get it out. So he understands he's going to win first down. He's not, he's not going to turn the football over, right? He's not going to get greedy. Um, if it's, let's just say that's a generic curl flat concept and you're giving him the flat, Jaden's not going to wait for that curl to be open. He's going to take the flat, right? And he, then he's going to create the curl window for the next play, if that makes sense. It does. Um, I apologize. I said the last thing, but anything else to know about him? Anything else that you think is important to note? No, I just, I mean, buckle up, guys. Get ready for the ride. I think you guys got a special one. You know, I know you guys got a special one. Um, you, you know, every, everything that everybody's saying about him, as far as him being a pro's pro and going in there and and tackling the playbook and and – going to be proactive in his preparation and just a good human being. And, and uh, you, you guys should be really, really excited. You got a good, you got a good one. Ryan, I appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Ryan for joining me and thank you as always for tuning in. I'll be back later in the week, probably Wednesday with another episode as we continue to give you podcasts even while I'm on vacation. I'll talk to you next time.